DPHS is not your typical high school, so who would expect the first day to run completely normal? Driving down Turkey Lake Road on August 24th, 1992, we listened to radio reports of Hurricane Andrew's devastation. Many of us were directed to park in the Universal Studios parking lot, and as we walked across the campus, we saw the reason why. Over 500 Miami Homestead residents sought refuge here in the DPHS gym. For a week, students and faculty helped guide these people through this time of need. Good morning, Dr. Phillips, and welcome back to a hurricane edition of WDSC. I'm Jennifer Codwell. And I'm Veronica Rivera. To all ceramic students, community school sign-ups will be September 3rd from 3.30 to 7.30 p.m. or September 8th from 6.30 to 9 p.m. As you all know, Hurricane Andrew is threatening the people of Central Florida. Just here in the DP gym, we have 1,100 people and 500 to 1,000 more are expected to come. It's amazing that just five years ago today, Dr. Phillips opened for the very first time. Here's some footage on that. And all the color television sets in the world, and all the climate control instruments you can install, will not make you a better person unless you use them to your benefit. I'm sure today will be just as memorable as it was five years ago. The Visual and Performing Arts Department would like to welcome the creative and talented students to have a super school year. And as many of you, know, as many of you would know, Mr. Spoon is missing on campus. He is running for the Orange County School Board. Here's his farewell dress given during summer school. I will miss you and wish you the best of luck in your election. 
Now, Dr. Larry Payne has a few words on our school opening. Hello, welcome to Dr. Phillips High School. For those seniors, juniors, sophomores, and ninth graders who are returning to this great high school, we want to say hello. I'm Larry Payne, I'm your new acting principal, and I'm very excited about being a Panther. For all those new students coming from all over the world, just literally uh, many, many countries are represented here at Dr. Phillips High School, a special welcome to you, and we hope that you'll have a great day in Panther country. I'm excited about being here, as I've said. This is an exciting high school, great students, one of the best faculties in the entire United States, and so we're all just very grateful that you're here at Dr. Phillips High School, the perfect place to learn. On a first, great first day of school, and I welcome all the freshmen. With the gym as a shelter for the hurricane, no parking spaces, a new principal, and shorter days of school, the first day of Dr. Phillips comes to a close. As they hike over to Universal to get to their cars, we stopped a few of them to see how their first day of school has gone. It was pretty good. There were a lot of people in my classes. Right. Well, I thought it was great. It's just a little too crowded, you know, but other than that, it's pretty cool. It was a good beginning. Well, it was, a, it was exciting because I have all the new students. The new ESOL students were arriving, but I know I was missing a lot of students. I think a lot of students stayed home because of the hurricane. So we're really looking forward to seeing how the week goes. But it's going to be a great year. It was really kind of terrible. I mean, I felt like a freshman again, but I mean, and not really I'm a senior, and it didn't feel like my senior year. I don't know. It was kind of, it was terrible. <laughs> well, I think things went remarkably well considering that we had 1,100 extra people on campus, and we got started a little later than usual. Instead of staying home and just looking at my father's face, that's about it. It would be more fun, it's just we had more people. Tonight's dance, well, it's okay. It's the first dance, because like, not a lot of people showed up, but it's okay. It's kicking. <laughs> It okay. needs some more hearts. Yeah, it needs some more jump. Well, it looks like the fifth annual Dr. Phillips Howdy Dance was just spectacular. Some people had a good time, and some people had a not so good time. But it's better to love than lost than not to have loved at all. But anyway, <laughs> I had a great time here at the Howdy Dance. All you guys that showed up, I'm sure you guys did too. Seniors, you know, if you missed it, you missed the very last Howdy Dance ever. But that's okay. Thanks, everybody, for coming out. And for WDS, DS, <laughs> for WDOC, this has been Trisha Porter. As I walk through this gym, I can still hear all the sounds of our pep rallies. It was right here where the seniors showed their spirit for the senior class. 
and on this floor were the many performances by the guard, cheerleaders, fly girls, and of course the band. Pep rallies were a big part of the student body. They provided spirit and enthusiasm for the upcoming football games. Not only that, but they united students together to create an overall spirit for our school. Panther football. To many Dr. Phillips students, it's more than a sport. It's a part of their lives. And somehow, through all the cheerleading and the rally cries and the audience participation, it fuses together all the elements of school spirit. Now, the Panthers may not have had the season they had hoped for this year, but they definitely made a lot of memories out here. And they've left their mark here, a place they like to call Panther country.
unforgettable weeks of the year is without a doubt homecoming week. Filled with spirit and enthusiasm, students participate in daily homecoming activities such as college sweatshirt day and hat day. Thursday night hosts the biggest pep rally of the year, Panther Pounce, which prepared students for the big homecoming game and the crowning of the king and queen. This year's homecoming was a bit unique since the homecoming dance was scheduled on the same night as Halloween. With a Halloween twist, the theme was a masquerade of memories. And that's exactly what it was, a week filled with memories that could never be forgotten.
gentlemen, faculty, administration, and staff, students, parents, friends, and relatives, welcome to the sixth annual Panther Pounds. of drinking and driving. Next on the list, I'm in behind the uh, floats here. We lost our other narrator from the seniors out here. We should be the sophomore bloke.
Things are heating up out here. I can tell. Right behind the junior float here, we have the seniors. Look out, juniors.
only seconds left in the first half, and the score is currently 23-0, so it appears the real action tonight is going to be off the field. The crowd's anxiously awaiting the crowning of the homecoming king and queen. Um, I think it's going to be whoever is on the TV <laughs> broadcasting, which is Jen Caldwell, yes, definitely. Jen Caldwell. and the and running back of the year, which is Aaron Lane. There's Obviously, unfortunately, that's who it's going to be. Yeah. Like always. Well, how have you guys been enjoying the homecoming festivities this year? Homecoming would have been fun this year if I could have showed a little more school spirit. Me too. Homecoming this year has been pretty good. It's been awesome. We got lots of spirit. We hope to win this game. Some people have doubts, but I think we're going to do it. We're here tonight at the Dr. Phillips Homecoming 1992 at the Stouffer's Resort. Everyone's arriving, so let's find out if tonight's going to be a trick or a treat. Well, if some guys other than freshmen get here, I think it's going to be really great. My name is Megan, and I had no idea I was going to be here tonight. I planned this yesterday with my friend. She roped me into coming, and this is what I got. You know, you like it? Mm -hmm.
the homecoming queen, Miss Jim Caldwell. The homecoming king, Demarcus Brody. Give them a big hand, and they're gonna start this dance off for us. Don't, don't, don't cut in until I tell you, because we want to get uh, lots of footage on this for WDOC News. The song from Richard Marks, right here, waiting for you. While most people celebrated Halloween trick-or-treating, the students of Dr. Phillips were attending Homecoming 1992. After a full week of homecoming activities, Masquerade of Memories finally concluded on October 31st with the homecoming dance at the Stouffer Hotel. What do students remember most about this event? Uh, my most memorable moment was probably watching people make fools of themselves. You know what I mean? Yes, I yeah. agree. It was, it was a great time shared by yeah. all. Yes. I danced all night. Gooping! With Gooping! Mosh! 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 <laughs> we boogie down the Santa Lab. Well, I believe that the favorite part of homecoming for, for us, the student council, and for me personally, was the crowning of the king and queen. <laughs> I love dancing with uh, Bobby and... I had fun dancing. Bobby heard. The most memorable time we had at home, the most memorable moment that we had at homecoming is when we did the booty thing. <laughs> homecoming week 1992, Masquerade of Memories, has finally come to a close. 
For some it was their first, and for others it was their last, but for all it was memorable. For WDOC, this has been Jesse Schwenke reporting. There are many outstanding and dedicated teachers here at Dr. Phillips. Today, one of them will be presented with the Teacher of the Year Award. The final six nominees include Ms. Rosemary Kahn from the Foreign Language Department, Mr. Rick Dunlap from the Social Studies Department, Ms. Janet Lee from the Science Department, Ms. Sue Poro from the English Department, Mr. Alex Smith from the Agricultural Department, and Ms. Mary Jo Rollo from the Exceptional Educational Department. Let's see who this year's Teacher of the Year will be. Hello, hello. Excuse us for interrupting this important class. This is a French class, and we're not taking a test. No, 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 sort of, but it's, all, it's all right. I'm sorry. Everybody will get an A on me if this is a test, okay? <laughs> Merry Christmas. We would like to tell you that uh, your teacher, Mrs. Kahn, has been selected by our faculty as a 1992-93 Dr. Phillips High School Teacher of the Year. here for the first nine week academic excellence breakfast. We went around and asked people what do they think about this whole breakfast deal. Food is fantastic. I so good I might eat it. The food is good. Two, one, two. Mmm, this breakfast is mmm, mmm, good. I love it, Dr. Mm, it looks real good. I need some seasoning or something. As you can see, the cafeteria is packed, so it does pay to get good grades here at Dr. Phillips. For WDOC reporting, this has been Ema Padilla. One of the neat things about high school is that students are not only given the opportunity to grow academically inclined, but they're also given the chance to interact with their community and to become a bit more involved with the world around them. The 1992-1993 Dr. Phillips students went above and beyond this year when it came to community volunteering, political issues, and social awareness. With such important events as the Hurricane Andrew and the presidential elections, it's almost inevitable for one not to become involved. Student Council hosted three blood drives this year, and all three were a huge success. Students also took part in environmental issues such as the Adopt-a-Spot program. All of these experiences have helped form Dr. Phillips students into a one-of-a-kind student body, and this is something we should all be proud of. When you hear Give the Gift of Life, what does it mean to you? To the Central Florida Blood Bank, it means dedication to the people of our community in need. The Blood Bank needs over 2,400 pints every week to meet the community's demands. In order for them to reach that goal, everyone must contribute. You have the opportunity to do your part, to take the time and save a life. Have you ever donated before? Yes, I have. And I encourage you students out there, healthy students out there, Dr. Phillips, to come and donate because one little pint of blood can save a life. And won't you feel proud to save a life today? I do. Makes me feel great for the rest of the day. You just donated blood, right? Yes, I sure did. And how do you feel? Actually, I feel like I've really given myself to society, and I am really glad I could share this with all my friends. I thought it was going to be really scary, and I was shaking at first, but it was, it didn't, tur it turned out it wasn't that bad, and it was... Have you ever given blood before? Yeah. And uh, if you could encourage anybody from Dr. Phillips, what would you say to them? It doesn't hurt, because a lot of people think that, you know, because the needle's so big and they stick it and all this stuff, that it's going to hurt, but it doesn't hurt at all. And if you just sit here and you just chill and you drink some soda, and then you turn around and it's finished. Just do it. Just do it. Um, we've heard a lot of opinions from the students, but can you, as an expert, tell us, is giving blood safe? Absolutely. Giving blood is definitely safe. We have a disposable bag. The needle is used once, and it's disposed of. It's biohazardous waste. So the students are not exposed to anybody else's blood or blood products. Great. And can you uh, say anything to encourage students of Dr. Phillips or even more people in the community to give blood? We would encourage everyone blood. The statistics show that 60% of the people in the United States will need blood and only 5% donate. 
So we're hoping that the students at Dr. Phillips and the staff will support the local community, and we appreciate it. So as you can see, both the school and the community are giving blood, but there's a lot more to be done. So take advantage of the opportunity and do your part. For WDOC, this is Sarah Henderson. Hello, that Every Thursday afternoon, many National Honor Society members play with and entertain children at the Orlando Day Nursery. Not only do they receive points for doing this activity, but they also find it rewarding and very enjoyable. Kind of share um, what I know with them and try to help them in any way I can, basically. And it gives me a lot of self-fulfillment and um, makes me feel good after I leave because I know I'm helping somebody who really needs it. The Orlando Day, Day Nursery is a lot of fun for me because I get to um, really and, you know, play with the kids and they really open up to me and have a good time. So if you want to do something rewarding with your week, meet every Thursday afternoon in front of the flagpole at school and come with the National Honor Society to the Orlando Day Nursery. You don't have to be a member to come, you just have to love kids. For WDOC, this has been Lisa Gillick reporting. Welcome to a holiday edition of WDOC. I'm Taryn Arley. And I'm Erin Carlson. I know a lot of people are excited for the holiday season, and their favorite part is opening presents. I know I made up my wish list for Santa. Let's go find out what some of the other DP students are wanting for Christmas. Mm. Christmas is some money and gold. And that's all. Everything else, all I need is my life, health, and strength. Now, what I'd like for Christmas more than anything is um, health, happiness, really and nice success body. for all the colleagues and students that I work here. with here at Dr. Phillips High School. I want one, of the, one certain baseball player, number, well, I don't know his number, but I want him for Christmas. A really one with a really nice body. I want a big fat woman I can sink my teeth into. <laughs> I want a real skinny girl that I can sink my teeth into. What I want for Christmas is a longer Christmas vacation. I always wanted a guitar. Electric. What I want for Christmas is for all the people who've uh, been in a disaster to have a safe Christmas and those homeless people to have a warm place to stay and food to eat. G.I. Joe's and a Sega and a Super Nintendo and um, a big, big, fast remote control car. My husband keep his job because he works at Martin Marietta <laughs> and uh, things are really changing around there so that's my wish for the Christmas and New Year. As you can see students have a wide variety of expectations for what they want for Christmas. For WDOC this has been Lori Berkey. Well those sound like some great wish lists. Yes hopefully I'll have a big present with four wheels and a big red bow. <laughs> and on a more serious note Santa has a message for you about safety over the holidays. against drinking and driving. Uh, Aaron, can you tell us a little about the uh, car out in front of the school there? Well, as you guys have, might have noticed, we have a crashed car out in front of the school. And we put it there as a reminder, um, not only to students, but to the community, to not drink and drive during the Christmas holidays. It 
shows you what could really happen if you do get behind the wheel or if you're hit by someone who is drinking behind the wheel. Tom, man, uh, you're not going to go out and drink and drive this holiday season, are you? No, this holiday season I'm playing it safe. Hey, but I'm going to Texaco. Hi, I'm Officer Roberts from the Lando Police Department. I'm your school research officer here at Dr. Phillips. I'd like to wish you a Merry Christmas and some happy holidays. I'd also like to remind you to please not drink and drive and don't ride with anybody that does. Remember, this is the worst time of year during the holidays for traffic fatalities. Also, remember to wear your seatbelt. Call someone else and just don't ever let anyone that is, has been drinking or that is drunk get behind the wheel, especially if it's yourself. You don't want to endanger your life or anyone else's. So call your parents, call someone, because it really, especially over the Christmas holidays, there's a lot, you're more susceptible to that because a lot more people are being merry. So just be careful and call someone. Happy holiday. So remember to keep your seatbelts on and don't drink and drive. And Christmas means many different things to different people. A lot of people like to visit family or just have a break from school. Let's find out what Christmas means to you. The Christmas spirit is here once again. With a decorated campus and colder weather, students and faculty are looking forward to this special holiday. We went around asking students and faculty what Christmas meant to them. Lots and lots of presents! Christmas plans, oh gosh, I want to spend it with family and friends and food and just have a great time. That's what it's all about. Time with my family. Cold weather and a lot of snow. This means to me being with my family and enjoying the holidays. It means I get to be with my family and spend all my money. To me, Christmas means snow because I used to live up north where it was really cold and I love the snow and I don't get any of it. From sharing gifts to spreading the Christmas spirit, Christmas is definitely a special time of the year. For WDSC, this has been Jennifer Caldwell wishing you the happiest of holidays. <laughs> There's been a dramatic change in the polls. Arkansas is not number two. It's Alabama that Miami will beat. <laughs> we hope you can find something to do over this holiday season. Happy holidays. We'll see you next year. <laughs> <laughs> If you like live music, like to rock and roll, is your night. It's 6th Annual Battle of the Bands. Sixth Annual Battle of the Bands kicked off last Friday night with Mr. Nadler's band Diggin' and Living, opening up their set with Pink Floyd. <laughs> Thank you. 
starting off the competition was Regiment, last year's winner, with a piercing rendition of Guns N' Roses' November Rain. The surprise of the night was Steel Trap from Bishop Moore. The diversity of songs and professionalism led them to the EB, the evening's champion. This happens to be one of the band's original songs. And finally, Shine, last year's Soul Patch, came out with a hard-hitting set. Congratulations to this year's Battle of the Bands contestants. Come on, come on, come on. Sit me down in the street. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Sit me down, down, louder than the street. We're here in the Dark Souls Auditorium, and for students who see the 3.5 to a 5.0, they got to see our drama department perform the things they were going to perform in a state competition. The world around me changes The trees are there and everywhere The streets are full of strangers I love you I think it was the best uh, grade thing we've ever gotten. I thought it was uh, exciting. Oh. From a distance you I like to see all of the kids come together and enjoy a good performance. I think our VPA is very good. And um, from what you witness in there, we got a very good staff. Students are awesome. Love it. Loved every moment of it. And I think anytime we can put together something like that for the benefits of, of the students, it's a good idea. opinion the assembly was a great success as for the drama department we hope you do great in your state competition and for administration we hope you do this again as for me I like the donuts each year there's many productions done here on this stage plays such as Merchant of Venice the boys next door Ella Mocenary death of a salesman and the music man much time and effort are put into these plays, and while those visual and performing arts students are working hard on these projects, others are working on different ones, such as Miss Dr. Phillips, Battle of the Bands, The Talent Show, Mr. Dr. Phillips, each having their own moment in the spotlight. Well, it might be getting ready for the fashion show or doing the VPA recital.
Now here are some more memorable moments on the DP stage from the 1992-93 school year. Man, I love spring break. Me too. You know, I haven't seen Emo in a while. Do you know where he is? I don't know. The last time I saw him, he was scamming on younger girls down at the water line. Oh, I'm not surprised. Have you seen Jen and Veronica? <laughs> yeah, I think they were like.
like at the pool or down the water slide or something. Oh, really? You know, I wonder what everybody else is doing for spring break. Me too. I wonder. Well, guys, we've had a lot of great vacations since school has started this year. And I know some of you early party goers are already planning your spring break 93. So, let's go see what's up. I guess I'm going to the beach. You know it. Get busy. <laughs> I'm going to the Keys and going scuba diving. To my uncle's house in Nepos and uh, help him herd his sheep. Spring break, I hope to be going to Brazil there, you know, where I can go to the, the big pristine beaches, you know, hang around the pristine women, you know. Not to say anything about American women, no, but, you know, I'm just going to Brazil having a good time. We're going to California and go camping because we have no money, once we get there at least. For spring break, we're going to be working at Wet and Wild, and that's about it. Colorado, go skiing, it's probably. I'm gonna go to the beach and have fun and hang out with my friends, like Julie. <laughs> oh joy! I can hardly wait to try it. I'm gonna take you off to a fun spring break. As for myself, I hope to be chilling at the beach. For WDAC News, this is Julie Baker. Hey, Mo. Hey, Mo. How's it going? Well, it's kind of slow, but I'm sure the action will pick up in a little bit. But tonight will be fun. Yeah, you know, last week I was over in Daytona and I saw some of the concerts and stuff. It was so awesome. Well, you know, the, in the 60s, that place used to be awesome. No kidding. Well, Fort Lauderdale used to be the place to go then. You know, guys, wouldn't it have been groovy if we could have been through that? Yeah, it would have been really hip. <laughs> Since 1952, thousands of college students have joined in annual spring break vacations to Florida beaches. Fort Lauderdale was the first popular collegiate haven and in 1967 hosted 30,000 young visitors. Daytona Beach also began to be inundated. Drinking and the pursuit of members of the opposite sex was and continues to be the primary diversion. Today, Florida beaches are even more popular. With the arrival of MTV, Daytona Beach has been catapulted into the most popular spring break resort in the United States. Bands on the beach, TV game shows, and crazy contests have replaced the do-it-yourself surfboards and fires on the beach. Memories of a lifetime were being made here tonight at Victorian Romance Prom 93. What did you think of it, Donna Martin? I mean, Julie Baker? It's awesome! It's great! It really is! And Veronica, how, how did you like it? I'm having a good time. We're having fun. Let's go see what it looks like inside.
Like prom 1992-1993 turned out to be a great success with prom queen Loa Pereira and prom king Aaron Lane. Congratulations to the both of you. You guys look great. You really did. The 1992-93 school year was definitely an eventful year, especially in politics. Along with the presidential election of Bill Clinton, Orlando had its own field of the political movement. WDOC had the chance to capture several of these moments, including an exclusive interview with the new mayor, Glenda Hood. Many people are calling this year the year of the woman. How do you view the role of women in politics as being important? It's very important because I think it brings a different perspective. And I think for so many years in government, we only had one perspective, and that was from men. Uh, we have seen many women get involved at the local level in city councils, becoming mayor, different advisory groups with municipalities across the country. And now we're seeing more women get involved at the state level. Where we really need to concentrate our efforts now is at the national level because we're... Many, many of us who grew up with former principal Bill Spoon recognize that he has now been elected as the new Orange County School Board member. First school board meeting. Many of you may remember former principal Bill Spoon as he was inducted. Here's Jennifer... Repo Jennifer Codwell reporting. Hi, we're at the Educational Leadership Center, where in just a couple minutes, our four new Orange County School Board members will be sworn in. There's a special excitement in the air for all Dr. Phillips students and faculty, because our own former Mr. Bill Spoon will be one of the candidates. Candidates who pledge to pay more attention to parents, teachers, and students were inaugurated Tuesday, November 17th as the new Orange County School Board members. A congratulations goes out to Katie Adams, Susan Arkin, Burt Carrier, and our own former principal, Mr. Bill Spoon. 
you place your hand on the Bible? Uh, the other one raise your right hand. <laughs> I do solemnly swear. I do solemnly swear that I will protect and defend. I will protect and defend the Constitution and government. The Constitution and government of the United States. Of the United States and the state of Florida. And the state of Florida that I am duly qualified. I am duly qualified to hold office. To hold office under the Constitution. Under the Constitution of the state. Of the state and perform the duties. And perform the duties of member. As a member, School Board of Orange County, School Board of Orange County, or County, Florida, Orange County, Florida. You are duly installed. Thank you. Not only did we have the chance to interview local politicians, but also local TV and radio personalities, such as Ron Seggy of the Ron Seggy Show, Kid Cruz of XL 106.7, and Christian music star Angelo Ballesteros. Sure, you know, with the importance of MTV now, you know, you can't just be a good musician, you have to make a good music video. Right. And can you tell us a little bit about what it's like to make a music video? Um, it's, it's a lot of fun, and it's a lot of work, and a lot of time, and you have to do things over and over and over, so it gets monotonous. But uh, contrary to what maybe a lot of people believe, you know, we really, we just winged a lot of it, just uh, going out there and shooting, and, but uh, it was shot by students. All the, all the, shoot, the uh, footage was shot by students, and, um, and they had a couple of things, points that they, uh, they had great attitudes, and they worked really hard and above and beyond what they were supposed to or required to. And I think that effort really brings good fruit, you know, when you approach it mm -hmm. that way. Well, speaking of which, you all are going to get a sneak preview of Angela's video. Now, this is your latest video, and it's right. called The Wind Will Carry Me. Right. And if you take a look right now, here's a peek at that. However, the most memorable encounter had to be when the Chicago Bulls practiced in our own Dr. Phillips High School gym before playing the Orlando Magic. And we had the chance to meet with Michael Jordan. Oh, she made you miss. <laughs> You're right, Pete, baby. You're right. Shaq, you're in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> and welcome to the 6th Annual Academic Achievement Awards Ceremony. Today, awards will be given to students in all subject areas. Students will be recognized for their GPA and being in the top 10 of their class. Valedictorians and salutatorians will be honored as well. Scholarships will be given totaling the amount of $2,800,000. School Pride winners will also be honored. We have a full schedule of events, so now it is my honor to introduce our principal, Dr. Larry Payne, to begin the ceremony. Thank you for our guest. Uh, the sound system will be much improved. Uh, we are going uh, school-wide with a, uh, an in-house television broadcast of this ceremony. And so what a great introduction. Technology is great. It's viable. It's alive here at Dr. Phillips High School. And I want to welcome you as your principal to the 6th Annual Academic Awards Ceremony. A special thank you to the parents. Let me present to you the class of 1996 top 10.
And let's recognize the top 10 class of 1995. your top 10 class of 1994. There's your top 10 class of 1993. Salutatorian. Deborah Biggins. <laughs> this next group, we'd like you to stay on stage if you would. PTSA, valedictorians for 1993, Dr. Phillips High School. Ashraf Amir. <laughs> Brian Bateman. <laughs> Jiwon Chang. Jennifer Close. Okay, Sarah Heaton will be unable to attend. Accepting for Kevin Madden is Matt Curley. Kevin Madden. Jessica Odell. And Jessica will also be accepting for Nicole Odell. Gary Pricer. Nineteen ninety-three PTSA Valedictorians, Dr. Phillips High School. Hi guys, and welcome to the final edition of WDOC. Well, it seems kind of strange, but this is the last time you'll see us seniors up here on the desk this year. Well, I'm Mark Cotto. I'm Jill Cottrell. And I'm Trisha Porter. Hurry, hurry, hurry. Summer ceramics classes are filling up quick. If you're interested in taking ceramics, be sure and sign up immediately. Today after school is the Mu Alpha Theta party. It's the end of the year party. All members should attend. Come out for some free food and fun. That'll be at 3 o'clock in room 309. Also, all students who signed up for Mr. Hershaw's AP European History for next year, there's a brief but important meeting Wednesday at 1.45. Be sure and bring your book bag. Well, on a sadder note, last week the Student Council dedicated a memorial to the 13 fallen Panthers we've had here at our school these past six years. This train plaque is in memory of those teachers and students who have died from our school. Here's a special segment on that.
Well, seniors, today is our last full day of high school. It's okay, Trisha. It's okay. Well, as seniors bid their goodbyes, reporter Kristen Hickey went around to get some final senior farewells. And once again, for their great okay. cooperation, wish them a lot of luck, and we love you, seniors, Dr. Fultz High School. I just want to say goodbye to my brother, Steve Jarrett. Even though he's annoying and obnoxious, especially around his friends, I still love him anyway, and I wish him good luck at University of Florida. Say bye to Mike Moda and Eric Leister and my little sister. I would like to wish Jack Guthman good luck at UF, and I'll miss you very much. Bye, Kuntika. Bye. I just like to wish my boyfriend AJ. I hope that he has wonderful memories at Miami, but that I will miss him very much and that I love him. All right, I'd like to say goodbye to him, that punk senior Andre. It's, it's been fun beating him up all these years, you know. We're not gonna have anybody to pick on anymore, so later, Andre. I just like to say goodbye to my sister and good luck with finding a real guy next year. <laughs> and I wanna say goodbye to my brother, although we don't always get along or we never get along, I will miss you and good luck. Say bye to all the senior cheerleaders this year. I would like to say bye to my good buddy. He's like a brother to me, and I miss him next year. Aww, that's well, seniors, you're on your way to college, and I know you're going to have a good time. I'm going to miss you here on WDOC News, and someday I know I'm going to turn on that television and see some of you either on the screen or in the credits. Good luck in your future, and stop by and say hi to Kurtz when you're in town. Take care. Well, guys, this is it. This is the last day for seniors, and we've been the best year ever. Thanks for everything, guys. Grad night and prom, and both grad nights make it easier, and I've gotten to know a lot more of you, and it's really going to be a tough year and a tough graduation as you walk across that stage. Goodbye, seniors. I'll miss you. Good luck, seniors, in everything you do. Goodbye, seniors. Have a good summer. Um, study hard at school next year, and you've made this a good year for me. I hope it was a good year for you, too. Well, guys, um, I don't know. Uh, you know, I have uh, a few people have been around for a long time, so especially student council, I'm going to miss those. I have a lot of students I'm going to miss, but I don't know. <laughs> I'm glad you're gone. Bye! <laughs> You've been a great class, and we look forward to seeing what great things you're going to do with your lives. Good luck. I think we have an exceptional senior class, and I'm not at all prejudiced because my son's part of it. But I wish them the very best. They're entering an exciting world, whether it be the world of the university or the world of the workplace. Goodbye and good luck to the class of 93. And that we'll miss them, but not a whole lot. And the best of luck to everyone. And I know they'll miss me. Over and out. Hey, seniors, last time to call you seniors till you walk across that stage. It's been exciting, ups and downs, and now you're out on your own. Go for it. Get it all. It's yours. Bye. Think about the things that got you where you are now. Those are the sorts of things that's going to continue to make you grow and become great young people of the future. Congratulations, and, and to whatever you do, goodbye. Okay, seniors, I want to wish you good luck. You've been a great class, and I hope next year's class can live up to your standards. I'd like to say goodbye to all you seniors. I want you to know that this year is no different than any other. I'm going to miss each and every one of you, and I really hate to see you go. Bye. Bye. Right. Yeah. Well, seniors, yeah. it's been great. Make sure you have a good year, have a good life, and good luck to everybody. Hello, my name is Garrett Morrison, and today I'm here with the uh, girls' golf team. The girls' golf team has recently captured themselves a state title. And uh, Ms. Sparks, uh, what to you? What What do you believe that? What do you think it was that put you all over the top this year, so y'all could get a state title, state championship? A lot of dedication, a lot of hard work, and we set goals at the beginning of the year, and the girls reached their goals. That's good to hear. And uh, for you seniors, uh, Kathleen, Jennifer, uh, what all was it? For, what, what all does it mean to you? Um, that means a lot because Jennifer and I know being on the team for four years, we've worked and put a lot of dedication into this. And for it to finally happen our senior year, it's probably the best thing that could probably ever happen to us in our high school career of golf. 
Mm -hmm. We worked really hard for four years, and the senior year is the year it's supposed to all come together, and it did, and it's something really special that, that we were fortunate enough to have to happen to us because we worked so hard for it. Um, I know it's a special thing, and uh, I know it doesn't. It, it takes more than two people to do it. So uh, for the underclassmen, uh, how does it feel for you guys? Um, we've worked really hard for the past three years, and it's nice to see that all that hard work's paid off, and I'm really proud to be a Panther right now. <laughs> Well, it was a great experience, and it's something that we'll take with us for the rest of our lives. And we're just really happy. Miss Kristen? Um, well, it was, it was really great, and we were really excited because we worked so hard, and it paid off finally. Uh, Miss Sparks, y'all have had a lot of success in the past, and uh, even though you're going to be missing two seniors next year, will you be able to continue the success? I think so. With these girls on the team and the hard work that they are able to do and the way they play golf, Yes, I think we can. Uh, well, congratulations to the girls' golf team, and uh, best of luck next year. And hopefully y'all can go back-to-back -back just like the guys.
You have kept the faith. You have carried on the tradition. It's now time to celebrate. Hip, hip! Hip, hip! Hip, hip! On behalf of the School Board of Orange County and by the authority of that school board, I hereby confer upon each of you the honor and recognition which has been earned as a graduate of Dr. Phillips High School and the Orange County School System. I commend you and congratulate you most heartily on this mo mo most notable achievement. Congratulations, the class of 93. Christopher P. Ebrahimov. Don Janine Falcone. Shazia Farhat. Allison Gail Fitz. Ladies and gentlemen, the graduates of 1993.